Welcome to CSET Biology, the cover page. From wherever you are in the world, I do hope that all is well wherever you are. This is, of course, volume 22. And today we're going to be continuing our exploit on the respiration and be touching a little bit on respiration. We should have had a session yesterday completing respiration. However, I was unable to do so. So I really apologize for not being here to have that session with you. But for that, you're going to be getting an early evening off today. So I guess a lot of persons would be happy about that. I do hope that you have been watching the, you've been watching the videos I have delivered, like I have said, on the respiration videos. So a lot of persons should be feeling really nice. Not the respiration, sorry. I, I ha I'm a little distracted here looking at a monitor on this side, so forgive me. All right, so I would have sent out um, the, the multiple choice papers as I had promised. I must say that the 2016 is still being worked on. I did tell you some time ago that the 2016 is, of course, no walkover. Um, like the others would have had a whole lot of repeated questions, 2016 we have to ensure that we are going in and going in good so that we can give you a paper that is well worth it. So if you are out there in distant land, remember that you can like, share, and subscribe. It would be nice if you subscribe. You'd be able to come on over and join in the discussion that we'll be having this evening. We are going to be looking, like I said, Matt Millen is here from St. Vincent. Good evening. Is there anybody else who want to say evening? Uh, we are waiting on persons to move on, which is usually the thing. We should have started five minutes ago, but I I was really engaged. But despite I was engaged, I know that I had to be here, even if it is to do a part of the show. It happens like that sometime, but we never shortchange the students. If we are not going to be able to do the show, we are going to be pick up on the show another evening. So, Ranique Brown is here this evening. Good evening and welcome to the show. We are waiting on the entire family to log in. When you log in, just let me know if you're a Jamaican, which school you are from. And of course, if you are not from Jamaica, just share with me which island you are from. Unless I would have said, for example, which island you are from, like I said from Macmillan, then you wouldn't need to say which island you are from. But if you're logged in, just tell us which school you attend, if you're a Jamaican. And if you're from another Caribbean island, just tell us which island it is you're from. Uh, we have a whole lot of things lined up, a whole lot of changes coming. Uh, changes to benefit you, of course. We have been working, working, working. Um, just now you realize that I was saying that I was engaged. Um, we are procuring again. All right. Tanisha is from uh, Guyana. Welcome, Tanisha. How are you doing? We are procuring a new equipment. We did, we, remember, we bought the equipment from Barbados, uh, Kevona. I hope that's the name. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Please invite other persons to come on over. We want to have a chat. Our show is not going to be as long as we wanted it to be this evening. You're going to get a nice evening off. Over, over we're going to pick up for that on, on Sunday. All right. Now, if you observe that we have been gauging the, the live and we've been using some number, volume, volume 20, volume this, that is probably how many slides, how many uh, live we have online because we would have taken off some, but we have about 20 online. Now, the reason for using the numbers is for you to be able to follow the lesson, right? So we are not going to be skipping like we were doing before. We have somewhat uh, become a little more orderly. We're, we're doing a little more orderly. Um, so we want you to follow the volume. Um, we're going to be taking down some, but from ecology, you can follow. And uh, we're going to ensure that they have the correct numbers that you can study. Have you been looking good even, Kevon? How are you doing? I was not at class today. I'm very, very sorry. I tell you, things are not so nice on my side, but with time, it will get better. Uh, I am happy to see you. I have always been saying that Kevon, Kevon, Kevon has changed so much being this giant uh, that we have been looking for. Anyhow, we left off in our last class. We were looking at anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration. And I was talking just now about 
the past papers that we have sent out. We have sent out, just, just remind me if you have seen them, um, for biology, we have online 2012, 2013, and 2014. If you're a biology student and you are going to be sitting the exam this year between May and July, it is time for you to start doing the past papers. If you are a human and social biology students, student, we would have had on the channel, I would have placed there 2015, 2017, 2019, and 2020. 2016 should be out by about Monday. We are open. And of course, we don't have a copy of 2018. If somebody could send us a copy of 2018, that would have been really, really fabulous. Now, let us also put in a prayer for those persons who will be having exam, I think, next Friday. I think the 29th thereabout. Those persons who want to extend our love to them. Uh, from Antigua and Barbuda. I love you. Thank you very much for being here. I don't think I've ever seen anyone from Antigua and Barbuda before, but I'm very happy that you're here. And we ask that you share the message because we're going to be here for a long time. I have been in education for some 11 years. And of course, online, I took the teaching online because I wanted you guys to judge what I do and for me to better the craft. So I'm very, very happy that you're here. I'm very happy that all the Caribbean islands uh, are represented, or most of the Caribbean islands are represented. We have been working on something. Just allow the others to come in. You understand we have our chick chat before our class because we're waiting on the others. We really don't want to start the lesson and leave persons behind. But we have a nice lesson lined up. So we have those past papers out. Now, I know that you have been watching the past papers. And as far as possible, I am not an employee of... Uh, Good evening, Ice Queen One. Where are you from? If you are Jamaican, just tell me what school. Uh, if you don't want to tell me what school, just say that you are Jamaican. Uh, yes, uh, I was tell telling you about the past paper. I want you to be able to interpret them properly. I am not an employee of the CSEC or CXC. No. So I answer the papers. And when I answer the papers, I answer them with the story that is in my head. In some cases, the story that they would have used to write the question might not be the same one that is in my head. So from time to time, we might have to put out corrections um, in the description or in the comment, right? Now, whenever I put out a, a past paper, I think about questions. They're probably, I've never seen more than probably six questions on a paper that we really have to wonder, um, is this, where should we go with this question? All right, so sometimes we say about six questions there, but sometimes it's way less than that. But when we have these questions that are a little challenging, yes, I find questions challenging as well. We tend to revisit them. We tend to argue them and try to understand from what um, um, view, of course, the paper two you uploaded um, are just paper one. No, we have a lot of paper one. We don't have any paper two up as yet. I'm very sorry, but we're getting there. Um, Sometimes we have to try to figure out what has been asked here. And more so, because we are using several past papers. If we are looking at the past paper and we see the question repeated, uh, we, are, we are saying, but this question had an error and we see the question repeat, it says to us, no, there's not an error. Try to view it from somewhere else. And with that said, I am going to make clear something here. I don't know if that paper was out. I'm searching for a paper to see if we have an error out. Or it is that I was working on a lot of paper and I um, missed it for something. But there's a question on a multiple choice paper. I'm sure it is on the 2017. There's no error out there on it, on it. And this is a question, and I want to make it clear for you. It is asking about pepsin. Pepsin, which is found in the stomach. It's an enzyme. He wants to know if pepsin breaks down protein to amino acid. What is your answer? Tell me in the chat there. All right, so just type in the chat. It doesn't matter whether you are wrong or right. You know that this is a place that all views can contain. After you are wrong, you'll become right. And if you are right, it is only better. We'll learn from you. So while you type in the chat there, and I'm waiting on others to join, uh, we are embarking on a new thing. 
we are going on. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, Tanisha. Tanisha is always on top of things. <laughs> um, I'm asking, pepsin, it's an enzyme that acts on protein. When it acts on protein, what is the product? All right. What is the product of that reaction? All right. Some persons are saying, yes, it breaks it down to amino acid. Um, Tanisha is saying it breaks it down to polypeptides. All right. So um, that's what we want to find out. What is your view? Because we have to clear that up now. All right. Good. So we are embarking on something new. We are um, heading to the road, a road show um, with promoting the, the channel. Uh, we want to reach 50,000 students from across the Caribbean. And if you observe that, we have been looking at the syllabus from all different angles. We have covered the eight labs for biology. And of course, some of those labs are for um, HSB. We are looking at those labs that HSB should do because we realize that the teachers don't allow you to do labs in most cases. Uh, when that happens, you go to the exam and you're not too sure what to do. So we're looking at the labs. We have animations out there. We have notes. We have video. We have several stuff out there, several products trying to reach the many different type of learners. All right. So we'll be having a roadshow and we are going to be showing the videos for the roadshow. Uh, the roadshow could start tomorrow or next week or Sunday. Pretty soon it will start. All right, so let me just address this question very quickly. Um, in that question, you have polypeptides and you have amino acid. The question is, uh, pepsin, having actin protein, what is the product? The answer is polypeptides and not amino acid. Now, it is going to be broken down by pepsin in the stomach to polypeptides. And then when it gets down to the duodenum, again, trypsin is going to act on it. And that is when it will be broken down to form or to release amino acid. Um, peptidates will break it down to, of course, um, what is it? Peptides. Remind me, Tanisha. So it is going to be broken down there. So let us not mistake this. I know it might be some misconception that we were all taught that it is in the stomach, that the pepsin is going to break it down to amino acid. No. There it's broken down to polypeptides. And as soon as it gets into the duodenum, then trypsin is going to act on it. Uh, all right? And then that is when it's going to be broken down again. All right. <laughs> Add a plus. Big up yourself. All right. So we are ready to go. Do you have any question for me? Have you been looking at the past papers? Is there anything you want to tell me? Is there anything that you want to ask me? I am never too big to say that I am wrong. Never too big to say that I am wrong. I am all. I'm a one hundred percent sure. If you follow my past papers, know my past papers, you will know those answers when you get to the exam. We we'll review those answers. From time to time. And we're not following what anybody else is doing. All right? We follow the content. We follow the syllabus. All right? So if you don't understand something or if something doesn't match up with what you know or you thought you know, um, just respectfully leave it in the comments. And, of course, Mr. Wilson is going to revisit it, give you my explanation, ask for your explanation, and, of course, we move on from there. So we are good to go. It is definitely the Caribbean show. And it's a show where persons who want that one in biology, this is where they congregate. So they are here on a Wednesday at 5.05. They are here on a Friday at 5.05. They are here on a Sunday at 5.05. And we are also thinking of putting in another show, but we'll tell you more about that. Now, it's very important to know that we are going right up to CXC and we are going to be putting on those past paper, putting on those past paper. Yes, this is a virtual classroom. We are not able to mark the books. We don't have the resource to do that right now. However, when we put them up, the past papers, ensure that you have a copy of the past paper, ensure that you look at what we have done and start understanding why the answer for something is what it is. I want to touch another question before I dive in. Please, I begin at the time. I want to look at a genetic question. And I'm trying to remember from my head here. The question, I think it was asking about tongue rolling, high color, 
and height. It's a question that is looking at variation. And in variation, a lot of persons will always dispute the fact that uh, tongue rolling is not genetics. It is en it's an environmental, it's something that can be influenced by uh, the environment. So they are saying that there are persons who were born and they are not able to roll the tongue, mm? that type of thing. However, they can learn to do it afterwards. So when I answered that question the first time, I had that story in my head. But I thought about it and I was very, very uncomfortable with the answer, very uncomfortable. Because I was looking at eye color, and I'm saying that eye color is continuous variation. Because you have brown, 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 different degrees of brown. And I was looking at eye color, and I'm also, not eye color, I was looking at height. And I was also saying that it is continuous variation. Because you have persons who is probably a meter, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. The continuity is there, right? Now, what we know is that continuous variation... This is the law that I should have used to answer the question. So sometimes when you argue with your question, it's what is in your head. And sometimes we have to go right back to basic, where we're answering a question. What is it on? Is this just an osmosis question? Um, asking about osmosis, or is it something that I should apply osmo regulation? That type of law we have to think about when we are answering multiple choice questions. When you get there, there is no question that you are going to say that this looks like the answer, this could have nearly be the answer or something like that you would have understood clearly what law, what topic you are using to answer the question. And we are going to be getting into that. I'm going to be doing something on that, that you understand how we answer multiple choice question, how you answer multiple choice question, rather than to go to the part that you are going to say, I'm going to do elimination because I don't know. In some cases, we have to do elimination. But when you know the topic, there's no need to do elimination. You just know that this law I should use to answer this question. All right. So the laws are always very, very important in answering the multiple choice question. And we're going to be looking at the laws. All right. Because having gone through the multiple choice paper, I want you to go through the multiple choice papers. And please, I'm begging you to do. Please, please, please. Not only the, for the watch time, but for you to understand the paper. So you understand how the questions are set based on the topic. Right. I want you to understand how the questions are set based on the topic. And then you will understand what rule am I supposed to use to answer this question rather than talking about eeny, meeny, miny, mo, or using the elimination method or I'd use A up there, so, so I use B down there. So we don't want to do that. And I'm going to be teaching you the correct way of treating with these multiple choice paper. Why haven't we put up any paper too? Because in most cases, it's a multiple choice papers, um, multiple choice questions that we have repeating. However, I have never ever seen paper two um, being repeated, but I know that students want to understand how do I answer the question to be spot on. Back to the genetics. I know that you're waiting for the genetics. All right. So we had their eye color. We had their height. And we had their tongue rolling. The first time I looked at it, um, I was bothered with this old thing of tongue rolling can be learned. So we now have to use a law to answer that question. Is going to be, what is this law that guide uh, variation, right? Variation could either be caused by genetics or environment. Now, we know that if it is environmental variation, right, it is, if it can be impacted or if it is impacted by the environment, then it is going to be continuous variation. That is a law to genetics. Variation, I'm going to answer this question. What am I going to answer it with? Okay, let me see what is happening here. All of these things, ah, they look pretty close. Okay, you can always be close. This is the rule. If this continuous variation, it is impacted by the environment. If it is discontinuous variation, it is not impacted by the environment. So with that, I had to revisit the question and send out a correction in the, in the description. So the answer for that question, which is a question that is repeated a lot of time, and it's repeated a lot of time because persons are not getting it right. Now, the, the answer there should have been height for continuous variation and tongue rolling 
for discontinuous variation. So somebody is saying, ah, I think Tanisha, they're probably pulling onto our ears and say, what is happening? Now, look at this. If you learn to roll your tongue, it is still going to be discontinuous. And why it's going to be discontinuous? There's only two ways about it. It's either you can roll your tongue or you can't roll your tongue. And that is what discontinuous variation is about. It is about yes or no. You have continuous eyebrow or you don't have continuous eyebrow. You have hitchhiker's thumb or you don't have hitchhiker's thumb. You have widow's peak or you don't have wid widow's peak. You have attached earlobe or you don't have attached earlobe. That is what discontinuous variation is about. So when we talk about, it doesn't really matter for me answering this question. It doesn't really matter that tongue rolling is still on the C-sex syllabus as a, a, a discontinuous variation. Because the truth is, you can't partially roll your tongue. It's either you're going to be rolling your tongue or you can't roll your tongue. So when I applied that rule, it became so easy to answer that question that I was like, wow, just apply the rules. All right? So we're going to be doing a lot for you. We're going to be with you more. We're going to be with you right through next Friday when some of our kids will be doing HSB and bio. And we're going right up to exam with you guys on this channel. But what I don't want to see, all my friends here listening, I don't want you to come and keep the knowledge to yourself. I want you to share it with your friends at school. I want you to share it with your contacts. The more persons we have, of course, the more encouraged we are. We are aiming to reach 50,000 students. Let me just write it there. 50,000 students from across the Caribbean. We don't matter if you're black. We don't matter if you're white. We don't matter if you're a Negro. We don't matter if you're Indian. We don't matter which political party you support. We frankly don't matter. We don't matter if you come from uptown or downtown. We don't matter which school you go to or which school you don't go to. The truth is we have never asked your names. No. We just want to know that you are here to learn. And while you are here, you are respectful to everyone, including yourself. I've never had anybody disrespecting anybody in the room. And that is so awesome. That is really awesome. This is a place where persons can put up wrong information and we find a way and treat with it without them feeling small. And I'm really grateful for that. So we have been looking at anaerobic respiration. And you can remind me what is anaerobic respiration, please. Remember, we spoke about aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Uh, as it were, for me, I think the whole definition for respiration is wrong. The textbook thing is wrong. Because it leads us or mislead the student to think that respiration is only aerobic respiration. Look at the definition for respiration and see what it says. It does not embody anaerobic respiration. So I'm always saying... Um, Anaerobic respiration is a process by which organisms obtain food mm. without the use of oxygen. I've never seen obtain food without the use of oxygen. But it's that type of respiration that takes place without oxygen. Now, we're going to be looking at a lot of examples. We have looked in our last lesson, we looked at anaerobic um, respiration in the muscle cell where we spoke about the buildup of the lactic acid. And we spoke about um, the oxygen depth. And we also spoke about how to get rid of that. Now, today we are going to be continuing the, the whole idea of respiration. We did this bit already. And, of course, we are going to be looking at uh, the compost heap. We are going to be looking at aerobic respiration. We did this already as well. Um, fermentation. Uh, Kevin Maxer a form of respiration that occurs without, of course, oxygen. So we looked at fermentation. We looked at uh, anaerobic respiration. Uh, we said that it was very important in alcoholic fermentation as it produces ethanol, which is an alcohol, and, of course, carbon dioxide, and, of course, about, I think, uh, 2 ATP. All right? Uh, we said that uh, for anaerobic respiration, 
we produce beers, we produce wines, and we produce other alcoholic beverages. And this is one importance of anaerobic respiration in industries. So the next time you go and you get yourself an alcoholic beverage, I do hope that you're at the age and you get yourself an alcoholic beverage, you will recall that this is a product of anaerobic respiration. All right? All are done, of course, by alcoholic fermentation with yeast. So yeast is a very, very important um, component there for the alcoholic fermentation. Remember as well that yeast is a fungus. All right? Good. We also said in that lesson that the fermentation, yeast was very, very important with bread. It is because of the anaerobic respiration and the carbon dioxide that is produced that causes the bread dough to rise. So this is where we get to the point to ask about what is the useful product? What is it that we are looking for? So when we spoke about aerobic respiration, we were looking for energy. That was a big thing. That's what we wanted. When we spoke about alcoholic fermentation, what we wanted was the ethanol, the alcohol. When we talk about the production of bread, what we want this time is the carbon dioxide. So at all levels, we realize that some of these products that are not useful in one arena, when you get to another arena, they are, of course, what we are looking for. Now, anaerobic respiration is also, I want you to read on these for me. They might be in the textbook that you're using. They are using cheese production. They are using special sour cream. They are using yogurt. All these are, are of course, products of anaerobic respiration. It's important to note that the lactic acid is used when we're looking at this sour cream and so on. The lactic acid is used to provide this tangy flavor that you love so much to taste. All right, so we move right on. There's something that I did not touch. I want to look at anaerobic respiration. I don't know if I gave you the formula for uh, glucose and yeast. Our uh, anaerobic respiration with yeast. We are using yeast and the glucose with enzymes being the, of course, the condition. Over the arrow there, you are going to be having enzyme. And, of course, we are going to be producing alcohol and carbon dioxide. All right? So you want to ensure that you know, you want to ensure that you know the equation for all the examples I gave now. You want to know the equation for aerobic respiration. You want to know the equation for... Uh, the lactic acid in the muscle cell, anaerobic re respiration in the muscle cell. You want to know the respiration for using yeast. So all of these, I ask that you go to your textbook and ensure that you use the opportunity. Sir, I'm currently doing an experiment with the use of yeast for wine. Is that your planning and design? We did something like that for planning and design. You can tell us about it. Just let me wrap here, though, and I'm going to be listening to you, Tanisha. All right. So anaerobic respiration... The denitrifying bacteria in the nitrogen cycle, the denitrifying bacteria in the nit nit nitrogen cycle, they carry out their action in an anaerobic environment. Now, in the production of biogas, biogas, I mean, you need to know about biogas more so you HSB person, you HSB student, because when we look at landfill, this is a popular question to ask about what gas is produced in landfill. Um, the methane, the methane coming off, CH4, the smallest form of alkane, it is flammable. But when we have landfill, we have decomposition taking place, something more like composting. And then we're going to have the uh, carbon dioxide coming off. We are going to be having uh, hydrogen sulfide coming off. And we're going to be having methane coming off. Now, carbon dioxide because of its volume, is one of those major greenhouse gases. Methane, of course, is wicked, but because the volume is not as great as carbon dioxide, we mostly look at carbon dioxide as the greenhouse gas, but methane is also a greenhouse gas. But the big thing here for methane is that it is flammable and it will send landfills into fire. If you have seen my multiple choice paper, I would have done the explanation about methane in those papers. 
Now, the hydrogen sulfide causes the, this air to smell really, really bad when we are having the decay. Now, composting is also a anaerobic respiration. So when we talk about anaerobic respiration with bacteria, this now is anaerobic respiration with bacteria. We are talking about yogurt production. We are talking about the denitrifying bacteria in the nitrogen cycle. We are talking about those bacteria that is used when we are for biogas. When we are doing biogas, um, bacteria is used as well and composting. So anaerobic respiration with bacteria, last time. Yogurt production, composting, denitrifying bacteria, and the production of biogas. Now, there are some things that are not here, but I want to touch them very quickly. Like the organisms that we refer to as a benthic organism. Now, benthic organisms are organisms that are down there on the seafloor, and they are so far down on the seafloor, in some cases, they are carrying out respiration anaerobically. And then sometime in the gut, like the tapeworm and things like that, they too are carrying out anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration is a natural thing. It is not fair to say that aerobic respiration is good and anaerobic respiration is bad because I've shown you a number of ways in which anaerobic respiration is pretty good. However, when we have anaerobic respiration taking place in the liver cell, sorry, not the liver, well, we have anaerobic respiration taking place in the muscle cell. That is bad. It will damage the muscle cell if it is not removed by you paying for that oxygen depth that you have used of oxygen that is not here, so you continue to pant. And in this lesson today, we're going to be looking at some of the reasons why we would be breathing that fast, why the rate of respiration would have increased, so you want to stick around. That when we get over there, you'll be fine. Now, we are at the last part of respiration so that we can move over nicely into the respiratory system, right? Or I like to call it the breathing system. That's where we are going next. But before we go there, being that we have covered... No, that's not a Yengas. That's one of the other fancy bikes. RRR, one of those bigger bikes. All right. So being that we have done so much work with aerobic and anaerobic respiration, I want us now to compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration. What I'm going to ask everyone to do, just to choose one and do that one. So for example, if you are going to say that aerobic re respiration produces inorganic compound, uh, in our inorganic product, and you are going to, then you are going to say now what anaerobic does. So for each, you are going to say, what is aerobic, the advantage there, versus anaerobic. So I want everybody to just type something there. I would have given mine. I said, aerobic respiration produces inorganic product, while anaerobic respiration produces organic product. All right? So I want you to do like that for me and write in the chat how much you can remember about aerobic and anaerobic. All right, everybody will get the first one right, I'm sure. All right, I'm waiting. All right, so if you have not done so, please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. We are here on a Friday, a Sunday, and a Wednesday, and pretty soon we'll be putting in another day. All right, this evening we are going pretty slow. We're not going to be having a long class, but of course we're going to be getting a whole lot covered in a little time. So one other thing, being that you're not typing, I'm, I might just engage you, is that aerobic respiration, it requires oxygen. So Tanisha starts out first. Aerobic respiration produces more energy than anaerobic respiration. All right, and Shaquille Lewis uh, aerobic respiration uses oxygen, while anaerobic respiration does not use oxygen. Very good. So now we are looking at comparing, right? So if you observe persons are using, um, in case Sha Shakila is using while, the comparison while, uh, Tinisha is saying anaerobic re respiration produces more energy than, so you're seeing the comparison there, the than. I'm waiting for other persons to tell us about aerobic and anaerobic respiration. I'm always saying that aerobic respiration uses oxygen. 
takes place in the mitochondria anaerobic um please remember to put that while while anaerobic respiration takes place without without and that would be nice if you say without oxygen and it takes place in the cytoplasm all right so when you get to the exam and you are answering your questions and it could have asked you to tell the difference right and it might ask you to tell two or three or four differences make sure that you number them right so this is one and this is what it is and then you go down to the other line and then you write what it is. All right? Don't write everything in one continuous prose. That might pose some problem. Ensure that you number the differences that you want to outline. All right? Nobody else wants to engage us. All right. So while I wait on the others, I'm still going to move on. I'll come back here. We're going to be looking at the respiratory system. And this is a popular system for those persons who are doing human and social biology. Of course, the bias... <coughs> Sorry. Something irritating me from over there. The bias students, they have to know more than just the respiratory system for human. They have to know about plants. They have to know about the fish. And of course, they have to understand a little bit about the amoeba and about human. Today, we are going to be looking at human. We might touch a little bit on the plant and a little bit on the fish. But when we get to the lesson on Sunday, we'll go deeper into the content so that biology will have a greater appreciation for the fish and for the plant. But today, HSB, I was supposed to have continue. Of course, by your students, you are supposed to know this. This is on your syllabus, but this is like everything HSB. All right? So today, the biology is the subset. All right, Matt Millen from St. Vincent is saying, aerobic respiration produces waste product, carbon dioxide, produces waste product, carbon dioxide, while anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid rather than carbon dioxide. Hmm. Um, I've never seen that, but it it is a little it's a little far fetched for me. It's a little far fetched for me. I'm thinking that carbon dioxide is always a product. Is uh, I'm thinking carbon dioxide is always a product somewhere because it's respiration. Right, and you have oxygen and you're burning glucose, or if you don't have oxygen and you're still burning glucose, you might get a small amount. But I, I've never really looked at that. That's a big one for me. Uh, sure, Ned, you can speak on that. Uh, carbon dioxide is not produced. That's what he's saying. I think he's saying that carbon dioxide is not produced. Um, I don't know, Matt Millan, I've never seen that. I mean, that is why I like teaching. He's saying that um, aerobic respiration produces waste product carbon dioxide, right? Uh, while anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid. But if my memory serves me well, I think we are my memory. I don't want to go and check on that right now. But if my memory serves me well, I think that carbon dioxide is one of those things. Of course, lactic acid is the big, big thing. Um, let me get back to that. <laughs> I don't know. You caught me off guard with that one. Uh, that one was just not in my brain. Say that again for me, Shernet. No, but we're talking about anaerobic respiration. No, uh, what is no? No, because I just said it, come to think of it. I just said that when we have composting, when we have composting, carbon dioxide is a product of that anaerobic respiration so it's not fair to say that carbon dioxide is not produced i just remember see sometimes i'm so slow all right so what i had what i had was uh, for aerobic respiration oxygen is needed while anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen aerobic respiration large amount of energy um, is produced anaerobic respiration small amount of energy is produced aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria Anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm. Then we continue to say that glucose is completely broken down with aerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, glucose is not completely broken down. Good afternoon, Charrington. Uh, Macmillan, I have to revisit that content. I don't know. I think you sort of shape me up like an earthquake. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to wrap my head around that right now. But I do know for um, anaerobic respiration with bacteria, we are getting carbon dioxide. I'm not sure if you are talking about, uh, and of course, even during the muscle, even do, during the muscle where we're having this lactic acid, uh, we have the energy. 
uh, we have the small amount of energy being produced, carbon dioxide is still being given off. Trust me, carbon dioxide. Like even though you have this anaerobic respiration and the bulk of the thing, it is a per capita thing, right? It's a per capita thing. You have more lactic acid than carbon dioxide, that type of thing. I remember once you start breathing, I guess this is very good. I'm tying up the system now. Once you start breathing heavily, right? Once you're doing any strenuous activity, once you're doing any activity, once you come under stress, you are producing more carbon dioxide. Naturally. Once you find yourself start panting, start breathing more, it naturally means that the... Let me just move. You see? Remember when we started out, we spoke about using the story to answer the question. If you don't have the right story, you can't answer the question. So the right story here for this question with the lactic acid, which is associated with the muscle cell, is now to look at what happens. Remember, once you start breathing heavily, you know, the medulla oblongata is going to say that there is a buildup of carbon dioxide. So let's get, get, get rid of it. So that is the whole purpose. Even with the oxygen depth, the medulla oblongata there is working. I remember, I don't want to jump the list, you know, because I don't want to pass some persons. So I can't take that answer. Sorry, Matt Millen. However, if you can defend the answer, we'll have a discourse on it. All right? But big up yourself. Something for me to look at. I like when you throw the oddballs at me because, of course, they make me get a little tougher and say, oh, well, right? So thank you for that. All right? So we uh, said that the product of aerobic respiration is usually inorganic, while the product of anaerobic respiration is, of course, organic. And some of the organic thing we could look at is like uh, the ethanol is organic, uh, the the um, methane that is produced is organic, the lactic acid is organic, and of course, compost is organic. So if you if you were supposed to ask about what are some of the organic compound, um, so organic product. I don't think I'm having my best even. Some of the organic product from anaerobic respiration, lactic acid, methane, compost, and ethanol. They are all organic. All right? I don't think I'm having my best even. Forgive me. Forgive me. All right? I do hope that I can make it up with you on Sunday. I think I'm still gaze over what happened yesterday and today. All right? So I want to look now at the respiratory system, and then I'm going to be looking more at um, some of the stuff that Matt Mellon made mention of today. But let me see what is happening here with Kevona. Uh, when yeast respire aerobically, they make alcohol and carbon dioxide. At least that's what the textbook says. <laughs> um, you see, being that the textbook said that, I'm going to ask you to get some yeast. Right? And when you get some yeast, there's a number of things that we could do. I always give my students this to do. We get some yeast and we get some ripe banana and we put the ripe banana in a soda bottle. We crush the ripe banana, crush it, and we put it in a soda bottle. A very easy experiment. And we add the yeast to the ripe banana in the soda bottle. And we cut, lock, um, we screw it very tight. It's very, very tight. I lock it really tight. Then what we do is to just put it down somewhere and we ask them to stay away from it. And then cautiously, we might feel the bottle. Now, what I want you to do for me, Kevona, being that you're not so convinced about the textbook, I want you to try this experiment. It won't hurt you. And tell me what it is like when you feel that bottle probably after 15 minutes or half an hour. Tell me what it feels like. You know, a soda bottle, a plastic soda bottle, like you'd have a soda popping. Just crush some banana, put in it. Add some yeast to it, close it, and see what will happen. Now, after you would have feel it, after you can determine what it feels like, the next thing I yes, it, yes, it works. It make it is making of wine. All right, of making of wine. Depending on which way you do it, because it could get vinegar as well. All right. So, um, what you do after that, if you have some lime water, not the lime water in the kitchen. When I went to high school, I thought that that was the lime water. All right. So we talk about lime water that we use to test for carbon dioxide that is of the lab. I don't know if you how, how much your chemistry is, but we're talking about lime water in the lab. Not that I am not convinced, just stating that the textbook is saying, but I will try the experiment. Please try the experiment. Um, if you have access to a lab at school, you could ask your teacher, and then you could just probably bore a small hole in that bottle if you can get a small hole pierced in the bottle and have that you 
pub that pass through the lime water, and if carbon dioxide is in it, then it should change the lime water to what color? Tell me in the chat, the persons who know. What color the lime water be changed to? All right, so while you work on that, if carbon dioxide is present, we want to know what's a positive test using the lime water. We're looking at the respiratory system. And the respiratory, respiratory system, simply put, is just a simple old thing. And we're going to walk through it. Passion, ethanol. No. Um, Ramlagan. Um, no, what we were saying, um, the positive test, Ramlagan, what we were asking for, the positive test, having done that experiment with the banana and the yeast, we wanted to find out what is going to happen when we pass the gas through the lime water. Being that it is carbon dioxide that is, of course, the gas given off, we are expecting, as Kevon would have said here, um, would have expected that it would change to a white color or a white precipitate or a cloudy white precipitate. So that's what I wanted. I wanted the students to know what is that positive test when we are doing the respiration and testing for, testing for carbon dioxide. Once we pass it through the lime water, if carbon dioxide is present, we are going to end up with a cloudy white suspension. And if you go on over to my channel and you look at the respiratory lab, you'll see all that being explained. So I really don't want to do that here. I tell you, I'm not having my best evening, but I'm pushing on. All right. So bear with me. I'm very happy that you're here and you probably understand what's happening. All right. So this is out. So let me move on to this. So we're looking at the respiratory system and the respiratory system is something that I'd love to walk you through so that, of course, you will have an appreciation for it when you get to the exam. Now, it, it starts pretty much with the nostril. So nostril, nostril, and this big thing we call the nose. And then the ear, was, we're inhaling air. So for those persons who are still locked in the whole concept of uh, we're inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide, let us not do that, all right? So when we inhale, we're actually inhaling air. And the air will pass through the nostril and it will pass pretty much over the larynx, which is, of course, the voice box. And then it goes through the trachea. And the trachea has some C-shaped cartilage. And the purpose of a cartilage is to keep the trachea open. Now, if you want to know what the trachea, tra what the trachea feels like or what the cartilage feels like, you could probably feel your nostril or you could feel your ears. It's made of cartilage. And of course, here, the track is at the front. So you could feel it. Now, the ear passes down the trachea. And then it goes to the bronchus. Now, it's very important that you understand this. Because when it gets down there to the bronchus, it's going to form this Y. Right? And one will go to one of the lungs and one will go to the other lungs. And then inside of the lungs... It is going to um, divide into some smaller, smaller tubes that are called bronchioles. And then the end of these bronchioles will be divided into some smaller sac we call ear sac or alveoli. So let us draw that timeline again. So the timeline here enters the nostril, passes over the larynx, goes down via the trachea to the bronchios to the bronchiole then to the air sac and the air sac there the alveoli is the gaseous exchange surface let us not go so fast there's another experiment i want you to carry out right now i want you to swallow some spit i don't want you to swallow any water please i want the old persons can swallow their own spit i want you to try to breathe and swallow at the same time. And tell me what is your finding in the chat here. Breathe and swallow at the same time. Try it and tell me what happens. Come on, that's a quick experiment. What happened? What happened? Breathe and swallow at the same time. Breathe and swallow at the same time. You don't have to swallow a gallon. Of All right. Amoy Lawrence is saying that you can't. You tried, Amoy? You tried? 
You can't. You'll choke. Tanisha, I say you'll choke. Anybody else? Have you tried? Macmillan. Sir, my net playing mad. Sir, my net. Oh, oh, your net not working so well. That's fine. All right. Anybody else? It's a simple experiment, you know. All that we want you to do is try to swallow and breathe at the same time and tell us what is the result. All right? Natisha Francis is saying, no, not possible. You can't. Anybody else? These are the simple experiments we do every day. All right. So now that you say that you can't, why can't you? Why can't you swallow and breathe at the same time? Anybody can tell me? Can't do both at the same time. Yes. Yes, I do agree that you can't do both at the same time. And I do also agree that you'll choke, Tanisha. But I want to find out from you why you can't do them at the same time. I'm talking and I'm breathing. But I can't swallow and breathe at the same time. Uh, Tanisha, because of the larynx. Tanisha, you're not going to believe this. This one bigger than you, Tanisha. <laughs> that, that's not it, Tanisha. But you're going to get it this evening. And I'm very happy that you got something wrong. I, let me give you a clap for that. You get something wrong this evening. All right? Um, you want to try again? Because I want to give you that clap you know, to ensure that you get it right. Uh, it closes and open and open for a different passage. That's not larynx. It's actually the epiglottis. All right, it's the epiglottis. I think you have forgotten that. All right, so let us move with that, sir, because food might turn down into the tracker, uh, run down into the tracker. Yeah. All right, it's the epiglottis. Very good, the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is this little thing that when you are swallowing, it covers the trachea. When you are breathing, it covers the esophagus. All right, so I gave you the experiment just now because this is a piece of organ that we really don't talk about. You're not going to remember it. But if I tell you, I gave you that experiment and you carry out the experiment, you should be able to uh, recall that there's the epiglottis. And uh, what the epiglottis does is to prevent food or water from getting in the trachea. Are you with me? The epiglottis prevents food or water from getting into the trachea. Now, when the food or water gets in the, the trachea because you're just drinking something or eating somebody, something and somebody gave you a joke and that happens, now you choke. What really happens is that there's this automatic reflex action that is quickly stimulated to save the lungs, to expel it from the trachea. So it comes up so quickly that it comes through both the mouth and the nostril. All right, so that is like a reflex action. It's like a gag effect, and it comes up in order to protect you. Can you imagine if when you were drowning, that water didn't get to the lungs, you could just, and it comes up, all right? But because we were not able to do all of that, it was probably more than we could have, then you understand that there are some persons who might drown. But why is it important for us to have a respiratory system? Why do you think we need to have a respiratory system? Tell me in the chat there. Why do we need to have a respiratory system? All right. So while you think about why we need to have a respiratory system. So I showed you the pathway of air to the lungs. Now, the lungs is this nice organ there that is, uh, should I say, it falls right between the rib cage or inside of the rib cage, and at the bottom of the rib cage, there is the diaphragm. So you have the diaphragm, which is a muscular sheet there. All right, so we'd say that muscular sheets are to separate the body into thorax and abdomen because just below the diaphragm, they'd say that's your abdomen or your belly, that type of thing. And the thorax, they would say that that is your chest. All right, in the middle of the chest here, so we have a little thing that we call the sternum. All right, so it's very important that we understand that. 
All right, I'm looking at the diagram here. So here we go again. So prevent, prevention of death, Tanisha. Death. All right, I was looking for something a little slower. So let me go with that. What do I have over here? So, oh, one part is moving way faster than the other. So to bring oxygen in the body and get rid of carbon dioxide. Very good. Um, um, Amoy, just that I'd love you to add to it rapidly. It must be done quickly. So for that reason, we need to have this respiratory system that it is done quickly. And I'm going to explain why we have to have it quickly. And we're going to talk about the respiratory surface in a short while. Tanisha, gas is diffused too long for us humans. So when we finally get oxygen, we'll die. Uh, Tanisha, I shall not let my guard down. Ah, <laughs> no, no problem, Tanisha, no problem. I only hope that you're not troubled by what I said. All right, all right, good. So for the respiratory system, we need to have a respiratory system that is moving oxygen in quickly and moving out carbon dioxide quickly. Now, while we talk about carbon dioxide and oxygen, we are talking about a net flow. Because in the air that we breathe in, we are going to breathe in nitrogen. About 78% nitrogen is breathed in. And the 78% of the nitrogen that we breathe in, we actually push it out. Now, we inspire 21%. You probably want to write, write that down. We inhale 21% of oxygen. And we exhale 16%. Hold one bit. I'm going to look at carbon dioxide. We inhale between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 of carbon dioxide, but we exhale 4%. So now I am going to explain the whole idea where it came from that you were taught at lower school that you inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Now, if you look at the volume of carbon dioxide that we inhale versus the volume of carbon dioxide that we exhale, you would have realized that we are exhaling way more carbon dioxide than we actually inhaled. And if you were supposed to look at the volume of oxygen, somebody type it in the chat that people can remember. We inhale 21%, 20 or 21% of oxygen, and we exhale about 16. All right? We inhale 0 0.03 to 0 0.04 of carbon dioxide, and this is in percentage, and we exhale about 4% of that. All right? So if you were supposed to look at the carbon dioxide, we are exhaling way more carbon dioxide than we actually inhaled. If you were supposed to look at the oxygen, we are exhaling way less oxygen than we actually inhaled. So for that reason, they are saying that, listen, we inhale oxygen because the body is using more oxygen. And we exhale carbon dioxide because the body is putting out more carbon dioxide. But my question to us tonight, where does additional carbon dioxide come from? Tell me in the chat. Where the additional carbon dioxide comes from? And has Kevin Nice write it in the chat just now? This 21% of oxygen that we inhale where we lose that five percent of oxygen? Where that five percent of oxygen gone? Tell me, in the chat, please. In the chat. So remember, we inhale zero point zero three to zero point zero four percent of carbon dioxide, and we exhale four percent of carbon dioxide. So Tanisha is saying that. The added oxygen, or the added, sorry, the added carbon dioxide is, of course, a product of respiration. That is true. That is true, Shaquille. And the oxygen that is missing was used up in respiration. See that? So, rightfully said there, carbon dioxide is a waste product of cellular function, which is, of course, respiration. And that is why we're having so much carbon dioxide being given off. And as we talk to the HSB students, 
when we talk about water pollution and we talk about that sewage going into the water and we have the increased mi microbe, it is also true that as they use up this oxygen and it is depleted in the water, so too they are releasing this high volume of carbon dioxide in the water and that will acidify the water. You see, it's a whole lot of things we can talk about around this thing, you know. Now, look at this now. We are inhaling 78% of Nitrogen. But it is not used by the body. We don't use nitrogen like that. How do we use nitrogen in the body? In what form? Tell me over there, somebody, please. How do we use nitrogen? Now, we're getting a little bit of water in the air that we inhale. A little bit in a bit. Right? And a little heat, it is sort of moist in the air that we inhale. And it is sort of warm and moist in the nostril. And we're going to talk more about that. All right? So... Food. Food. Yes. The nitrogen that we in that we <laughs> I think I'm troubling in Tunisia. And I'm gonna go I, I'm gonna continue, Tunisia. I think I'm loving it. I'm gonna continue. It. I hope you don't. So I'm gonna push it a little further. All right. So we're saying that we don't inhale the, the nitrogen that we use. It is not from the ear. We don't inhale it. We get it from the food, from protein to be specific. Tinisha is saying there. So we use nit this nitrogen from protein, or the protein is broken down to its smallest form, we call amino acid. Now, while we are using amino acid, the plant is not using amino acid. The plant is actually using nitrate. All right? And the plant is getting its nitrate from the soil. All right? So by your students, the nitrate, they are coming from the soil for the plant, but for the animal, they are using amino acid and it's coming from the protein in the food. All right, that was nicely said, beans and all of that stuff. Let us continue with the respiratory system. Now, so the respiratory system is driven by an action that we call breathing. It's driven by an action that we call breathing. And breathing pretty much is the inhalation and the exhalation of here. So, so we inhale, oh, fresh breath of here. And then we exhale. So we inhale to pull in as much oxygen as possible. While when we are pulling in, we are actually pulling in air, which is a mixture. But we want to get that oxygen because the cell is going to need this oxygen for the process of respiration to oxidize the food. All right? We exhale to get rid of the carbon dioxide because if the carbon dioxide stays in the body, it could poison the body or pretty much acidify the blood. Now, if the blood is acidified or if the, uh, the acidity of the blood, um, should I say decrease or increase? If the blood becomes acidic, what is going to happen is that you're going to have lesion on the skin or what we have sore. We'll call sores. So you're drinking a lot of soda pop, and you would have known that in the soda pop, in order for it to fizz, they would have dissolved carbon dioxide. And what you find happening is that your hand, this area, they start to strip, or your face might start breaking out, or that type of thing, because the carbon dioxide level is too high and it is causing the blood to be acidic. So you want to watch how much soda you drink per day. All right, let's move on with the content. So we say that it is important to have the respiratory system so that we can have a continuous supply of oxygen and we can readily or quickly remove the carbon dioxide. Now, it's very important that we have this system because we... We don't have the type of a survey. We don't have a large surface area to volume ratio, as it were, with the amoeba. When we looked at the amoeba, um, we have a very small surface area to volume ratio. So if we were supposed to wait on simple diffusion to remove this gas and to bring us this oxygen, as Tanisha was rightly explaining, what would happen is that it would take too long and we would definitely die. That is what she was saying. She was really uh, relating it to the surface area to volume ratio. All right, so we continue. So the gaseous exchange must take place quickly. Yes, 
gaseous exchange must take place quickly. As we spoke about the, uh, as we spoke about just now, the surface area to volume ratio. Now, the gaseous exchange area or the gaseous exchange surface, it is going to be different from one organism, as it were, for plants, as it would be for the fish or for human. We're going to be looking at what a typical gaseous exchange surface should be like. Or you could tell me in the chat, what are some of the characteristics of a gaseous exchange surface? Let us look from, uh, at the alveoli. Are the ear sacs, though that we have in the lungs we call ear sac. Uh, what is typical about the surface? All right, so the first thing that comes to mind is that they have very large surf area, surface area. And the large surface area is because they have this large number of these ear sacs. All right, so what else we know about respiratory? They should be thin, one cell thick usually, so that they can allow the passage, the gaseous exchange to take place fast. So it's a thin. We say uh, they must be moist. Yeah, the body does not operate in a banana chips environment. It is all moist. So it must be moist, thin. It must also have a rich supply of blood vessel or a whole lot of blood vessel. And the blood vessel are usually one cell thick. They must have a good supply of blood. So that because it, the, the, the gas here is tra it's traveling in the blood, it must be able to get there very quickly uh, for the gases exchange. To so get rid of the uh, carbon dioxide through the alveoli and pick up the oxygen and we continue. They never really mix, all right? They never really mix. And if you look at the alveoli, you will realize that it just doesn't mix, all right? So we never have deoxygenated blood being mixed with oxygenated blood. All right? So those are the four characteristics we said. Our Kevin would have said five characteristics of respiratory surface. One, they must have a large surface area, and that is popular on the multiple choice paper. They must be one cell thick. They must have a rich supply of blood, and of course, accompanying blood vessels, so that the gaseous exchange can take place very quickly. With that said, we have one other thing I want us to look at before we cut the class for this evening, and then we are going to pick up on the class on Sunday. Like I tell you, I am going, but I am going. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Amen. I hear the sell at the church, so I'm trying it. All right, so we want to look at some of the factors that are affecting the rate of breathing. And I primarily chose this. I jumped to this part of the, the, the uh, syllabus because I'm seeing on the multiple choice paper where this is a popular question. Uh, when, if you would have listened to me answering the question on the multiple choice paper, you would have heard me saying that if you go to an elevation of about uh, 3,000 meters thereabout, you are going to be having problem with oxygen because at that level the oxygen is not readily available now one other thing that you need to know is that normal breathing rate is about 16 between 12 and 16 breaths per minute i will talk about breath per minute we talk about breathing per minute 12 to 16 so when we're doing that lab that we're going to do the graph and you're running up and down and you come back and we're going to count it inhale exhale we're looking at 12 to 16 now, the breath, how fast or slow we breathe, is controlled primarily by the medulla oblongata, which is pretty much, it sits somewhere around the back part of the head here. And this, this is very, very important because when you become unconscious and we started to do the mouth, -mouth resuscitation, it is pretty much information that we're sending around here for something to happen. Now, the medulla oblongata, which is, of course, in the brain, it controls the breathing uh, that we carry out. And of course, it detects the carbon dioxide level in the blood. Now, if a carbon dioxide level in the blood is high, our rate of breathing is going to be very, very high. Now, if a carbon dioxide level in the blood is low, then you are going to breathe much slower. Hence the reason, that, hence the reason for you running in a, 
in at sports day we spoke about sports day the other day while you run and you carry out this physical or strenuous activity the rate of respiration would have increased remember that is where we get in the carbon dioxide and because the rate of respiration would have increased the blood would have had more carbon dioxide in it so this blood the carbon the medulla oblongata having this information is going to cause two things two muscles to start working very very fast now the breathing is brought about by these two muscles they are the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle so when you start breathing it as it is as a result of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle i don't want to look at the mechanism of, of breathing today because that is going to be a lab activity and you all will have to do it and tell me what is happening there so what are some of the activities that will affect the rate of breathing? This is our last exercise for the evening. Just type it in the chat there for me. What are some of the activities that will affect the rate of breathing? Very quickly. All right. The first thing I'm going to say, I like to give you one, is altitude. Because I don't want you to miss that one out. Altitude, height. All right. And if you know... If you're a football, I think I did this in a multiple choice paper. If you know about the Azteca in Mexico, it is built at very, very high altitude. While I wait on you to write in the chat there um, the factors that are affecting breathing, you just think about some. I'm not asking you to go textbook or anything. Just, just write some. If you have a textbook, that's fine. But just write something that would cause you to start breathing faster. All right? That's all I'm asking. All right? Or that would cause you to breathe slower. So... The Mexican, while you type them, I'm going to be talking just the same. The Mexican, they are practicing some, some biology. I don't know if it is good biology or bad biology. So they have this, this stadium that is built at very high altitude. And what they do is tend to play the workout matches, a lot of the workout match there. Because when you go there, um, somebody that is coming from very low altitude, they are not going to be able to breathe very well. Now, if you are going to be playing in the Azteca, you need to be there for about two weeks or more so that you can, of course, um, acclimatize to the area. Outside of that, you will have to go in an oxygen chamber in order for you to get ready for that. You need to have probably more red blood cell so that you can take advantage of the limited oxygen in the area. Pretty much like a fern would take advantage of the sunlight with a whole lot of chlorophyll in shaded region. So let me look at what persons are saying here. They are saying some of the um, factors that would affect the rate of breathing would include altitude. Yes, when you go high, you go and breathe faster. Um, exercise, if you are exercising, then naturally you are producing more carbon dioxide. So... Of course, you're going to get rid of that very quickly. So you are going to breathe faster. Um, anxiety and excitement. I'm having this exam. You've ever, you've ever been waiting on someone or you're anxious about something and you find yourself start sweating? Yeah, you start sweating because the rate of respiration would have increased. And because the rate of in respiration has increased, it is, of course, putting off more heat energy. So because more heat energy has been... Yeah, so the body wants to cool itself, so it just starts sweat, right? And of course, you are going to be breathing more because the rate of the, the, you are going to be breathing much faster because the rate of respiration would have increased, and because the rate of respiration increases, so too the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood. Let me see what's happening here. Uh, by being overweight, oh my! When you are overweight, remember that you have um, plaque in the blood vessel, possibly. All right, and this whole lot of fat. So what eventually happens is that it reduces the amount of blood that is being transported. So you understand that this oxygen is transported by the red blood cell um, as it combines to hemoglobin. So if you're not pushing enough blood, then naturally the cells will not have enough oxygen to remove the carbon dioxide and, of course, continue the process of respiration. As such, you are going to be breathing much faster in order to get rid of that carbon dioxide because it's not going as fast as it should. Now, strenuous, ex um, strenuous exercise like running. Yes, if you run, of course, you are going to increase the rate of respiration. And as you increase the rate of respiration, again, so too, you are going to produce more carbon dioxide. 
smoking. Smoke, of course, will cause you to breed faster. But let me just talk about this very quickly before we go over there. You remember when we spoke about carbon monoxide? And we said that carbon monoxide is going to readily affix itself to the hemoglobin much faster than oxygen will. So it's like you're, when you're smoking, what you find happening is that you're actually moving carbon monoxide in the blood more than you are moving oxygen. So the carbon dioxide cannot be removed as quickly as it should. Now, the medulla oblongata having this information, the intercostal muscle and the diaphragm, it is going to work more. You are going to breathe much faster to see if you can get in enough oxygen so that you can rid the body of this carbon dioxide that is about to cause problem. All right. Explosive exercise. Now, um, explosive exercise speaks to you running from something or running down something or you just had to do something very, very quickly. A lot of things we could talk about that is explosive. What I'm doing now is not really explosive, but a lot of things we do and we start to get really hot and get sweaty and all of that explosive exercise. Then we could talk about air pollution. And Amoy, as we talk about air pollution, the first thing is going to come to mind is that the carbon monoxide here again, it's a good way to argue air pollution. There's possibly a whole lot of particulates. All right, remember that smoke is solid, so we could have a whole lot of particulates in the here, and that too is causing a problem with removing the carbon dioxide from the lungs. We could also have a lot of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide concentration might be very, very high in the here, and of course, that too. It will, of course, cause us to breathe uh, faster. So polluted air is going to be among the things. Uh, also, if you have asthma and bronchitis, these medical condition, they will also contribute to that. You understand that the air passage will become smaller when you're at a point when you're aff affected, and that causes you to wheeze. And as such, you will definitely be breathing much faster. Very good. We spoke about smoking cigarette. Yes. Uh, surgery. Surgery, surgery, surgery. You want to elaborate on that? You want to elaborate on that surgery? I, I don't know that I was prepared for that one. I can't think of it in my head right now. Uh, surgery. Tanisha, tell me about surgery, please. Huh? What's there? Where they come from? Oh, they're coming from the light. They're coming from the light. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. All right, I'm not too sure about surgery. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I The only way I could um, talk about surgery or respond to that is that you're going to be anxious if you're going to be having a surgery. All right, because you're not too sure if you're going to wake up or you're not going to wake up. Outside of that, I am not too certain. I'll have to um, revisit that. I don't have the information to treat with the surgery right now. I'm very sorry. Uh, stimulants. Yes, stimulants could also do that. All right. Um, Surgery, what I could say again about surgery, no, not on the eye point of breathing very, very fast. But when you are doing a surgery, you might be given medication so that you breathe much slower. So we talk about affecting the rate of uh, breathing. We could also talk about it being faster or slower. So with surgery here, we are doing the surgery. Um, they will give you stuff that will cause you to, of course, breathe a little slower so that they have more space to work with while they are working on you or of course just to slow down the body action of course slow down the rate of respiration i think that is where that is going uh stimulant all right um tanisha fight um fight or flight that is adrenaline the adrenaline fight or fight response that of course will cause you to breathe much faster because you have a sudden burst of energy there. So, of course, you're going to have a sudden burst of carbon dioxide as well. And that will cause you to breathe faster. Tanisha, removal of lung, of lung leaves, you, leaves you bedridden. Removal of lungs um, if surviving on one lungs. 
Okay, that's surgery. I understand. I understand. So medical, for medical reasons, you could start breathing uh, much slower. Uh, that is plausible. All right, a hole in the lungs, that could also cause um, that type of problem. And of course, you have a hole in the lungs. I'm sure that they are going to be rectifying that. A hole in the lungs. Um, that is the lungs being punctured. I don't know that persons can live with a hole in the lungs. The lungs would, of course, be punctured. All right, so... There are some other stuff that could, of course, like we said there, um, could decrease the rate of breathing. And these could um, include depressant. For example, I am not sleeping. I am running up and down in the night before I go to bed. So I might get a depressant. And you know that the first depressant that comes to mind is get a drink of alcohol, man. You can't sleep, just so get a drink of some alcohol. All right. Our persons might get sleeping tablet from the doctor. That, of course, will reduce your rate of breathing, right? And you don't need that much energy, so you will go to sleep. And, of course, we could use sedative, and those could all slow down the rate of breathing. Thus, there will be less carbon dioxide in the blood. All right, so we could also just get rest. If you get some rest, you will slow down the rate of breathing. Uh, just sit down somewhere cool, probably get a nice drink of water, and rest, and then the breathing rate will be slowed down. And of course, environmental factors. If you are in a nice air, not, you're not in an office that has sick office syndrome. It's a nice, clean office. You know, they had to remove carpets from offices because of sick office syndrome. So you're in a nice, tiled, clean office where it is all your house is well clean and tiled. You're going to be breathing properly. But if it's not clean, this is HSB, if it's not clean and full, uh, 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 it has a whole lot of dust particles or suspended particles because you live near to a mine or you live near to the road, you are going to be having um, some problem breathing. All right? So environmental factor could impact uh, breathing. Now, you want to, of course, be in an area that is unpolluted. If you are in the, now that they are building, I don't want to go there still. Now that they are building houses sort of away on the edge of the urban areas, you find that persons are moving to cleaner air so that they can breathe properly. Now, altitude also affects the rate of breathing. Yes, we said that with the Azteca. Uh, Kevin McKenzie, sir, is it true that when we are tired and we yawn, it is the body response to lack to it is the body response to a lack of oxygen. I have never looked at that, but I have to use science to look at it. No. Um, when you yawn, what happens? When you yawn, it is one of those words that once you say it, you'll end up doing it. Um, when you yawn, what happens is that you are giving off air. And you're giving off more air than you naturally um, inhale. And if you give off more air, then naturally you are going to be taking in air. So ask me if that is plausible. Yes. Yes, it's plausible. Yes, it is. All right. So that is what we wanted to cover today in our class on Sunday. I will talk more about the rib the rib cage, the diaphragm, and we're going to be talking about the epiglottis, the larynx, the trachea. We're going to be looking more at those, and we're going to be looking at uh, the old breathing mechanism. What happens when you breathe, how the lungs move, how the muscles move, how the volume of the thoracic cavity uh, changes. We're going to also be looking at the fish, and we're going to be looking at the gill, and the respiratory surface there, and we're going to be looking at the tree. So we have a very interesting show lineup for Sunday. I'll definitely start preparing for the show from tomorrow. Uh, last I checked, they have yet to figure out exactly why we yawn. All right, so I'm always saying that they're not too sure why, why we yawn. I, pre I think it's probably one of those things like we spoke about. You know, remember the appendix? The appendix at the end of the large intestine there, while some persons are saying that it has no function, there are, there are some persons who are saying that the appendix is an area for useful bacteria. Uh, it looks like you want me to give you a little thing before 
you go. So I will just give you a little thing before I go, if the speed of my computer will allow it. I'll just share a little thing with you. Um, it's going like really, really slow. All right, so next week, Friday, we are going to be having, um, I think, the 29th there. I think we have the HSB kids going out for exam. Uh, I, want it, I want them to know that they have our support. We are wishing for them the best. And we continue to say to them, try as much as possible to practice as many past papers as possible. Um, at this time, I wouldn't advise it to go more than five years. I strongly believe, though we have not sent out the, the multiple choice paper as yet, I strongly believe that 2016 is a paper to look at. I don't know. I think two of the easiest exams I've, I've seen for a while is 2017 and 2020, the one that came last year. Those two papers. So you can look. 2020 exam was a repeat of a whole lot of uh 2015 so that is why i am of the opinion that 2021 will be a repeat of uh 2016 i remember i said that 2016 is no walkover paper all right so i'm going to be sharing with you now some questions all right you could hear me over there a while ago right because i was on a different platform could you hear me because i'm going back over there and i don't want to be talking and you're not hearing you could hear yes no Yes, no, it's fine. Yes, no. Did you do gaseous exchange and resuscitation uh, uh, already? No, but if you were supposed to go to my past paper questions, you would have seen me answer that, and it's nicely explained on the paper. We are going to be doing all that come Sunday. Sunday is going to be a big class. So make sure you get your ice cream and your food and come on out early. And Sunday evening, 5.05, we'll be here, charged, ready to go. And, of course, I'll be in a better mood. Everything should be fine. I should resolve the issues in my head by then. All right? So we're going to be here um, dealing with that nice and cool. So I'm going on over back to uh, past paper. I am just giving you a treat of 2016. I am sure you are going to be matching up this nicely when I give you. So this is the 2016 past paper, CSEC past paper. And I'm going to be sharing with you uh, about eight questions. And you could just put your answer in the chat. I am going to be using another monitor. So I might be a little slow or something like that. So I am, in the, I am on the paper now. So I'm going to be chatting to you and looking at the other monitor. All right. So the question reads, the ability of a living organism to detect and respond to changes in its environment is referred to as A, nutrition, B, excretion, C, movement, D, irritability. If you observe here, this is a question and characteristic of living things. What is your answer? Tinisha is saying D, she's out early. All right, so the responses are A, nutrition, B, excretion, C, movement, and D, irritability. And the question was the ability of a living organism to detect and respond to changes in its environment is referred to as, all right, Kevin is saying um, irritability. All right, Kevin, you don't have to say sir. I don't know if you don't know that I don't like sir. Sir makes me feel as if we are two different worlds. All right, uh, two. Which of the following organelle in the cell allows substance to pass in and out of the cell? Nucleus, vacuole, cytoplasm, cell membrane. So nucleus A, B, vacuole, C, cytoplasm, D, cell membrane. All right, you see, being that we are going a little slow, what, I'm going to, what I want you to do, when you're answering the question, just put which question you're answering. So the first question was one. The second question is two. So you probably can put like one dash and the letter, that, letter or the word and two dash the letter or the word. All right? I want to ensure that I'm following everyone. 
So let us start with three now. So we're at three now. So your answer is going to go very good. Just like Kevin has done. He say, he's saying that 2D. All right, very good. So for two, the answer there is D. All right, 2D, very good. Amoy Lawrence, cell membrane. All right, so 2D. All right, so remember you are going to answer with the letter, with the number for the question and the letter. Question number three. Which of the following factor is not necessary for photosynthesis to take place? A, water. B, oxygen. C, sunlight. D, carbon dioxide. What is your answer there? Tanisha is saying B. Uh -huh. Let me read the question again. Question number three. Which of the following factors is not necessary for photosynthesis to take place? Water, oxygen, sunlight, carbon dioxide. What is your answer? Not necessary. And not is the word that you want to underline there. All right, I'm seeing a whole set of different answers. All right, the, the, the explanation from Tanisha is so true. Oxygen is a product. So oxygen is not needed for photosynthesis to take place. All right, so the answer there for three is going to be B, oxygen. Yeah, and I just got up, so you know that this is an I always. You're going to be hearing. You should be fine a bit. All right. I know you probably were, you, you were wondering, where's Anai? I haven't heard Anai. All right. Anai, oh, no. Hi, Anai. All right, just, all right, all right, cool. Let, let's get to four. All right, four. An example of diffusion is the movement of A, sodium across cell membranes, B, Glucose from the digestive tract to the villi. C, oxygen from the alveoli to the capillaries. D, sucrose from phloem tube to companion cell. So for four, what's going to be your answer? And we are doing the C-sec, human and social biology. 2016 past paper. This is the paper that we've been working on. So we're at four. And Shaquilla, oh, she deleted her answer. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So Tanisha is out of the back block. Uh, please repeat. My pleasure. All right. So Shaquilla, listen as well. Shaquilla, listen as well. All right. Um, Thorpe is coming in. Worm is coming in a little late, but they are coming in. They are answering for three, and the answer for three is going to be B. The answer for three is going to be B, oxygen. So four, an example of diffusion is the movement of A, sodium ions across the cell, across the cell membranes. That one almost got me. B, glucose from the digestive tract to villi, C, oxygen from the alveoli to capillaries, D, sucrose from phloem tube to companion cell. I'm looking at you guys. I don't mind I'm not looking at this monitor or this camera. I'm looking at a monitor on this side. All right. So I'm seeing some new persons here. Persons are liking this game. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So persons are saying for, remember that you're using the question number and the letter for your response. So other persons are saying 4C, 4C, 4C. 
uh, for C. Tanisha, A is active transport. <laughs> All right, so A is active transport. What about D, sucrose? All right, so the answer here for four is, of course, C. All right? Uh, I think we're doing well. And I was a little worried in there, guys. Let me tell you why, we are, why I'm, I was a little worried. This is the very um, topic that we've just looked at. We have just looked at oxygen from the alveoli to the capillaries. That is a lesson that we've been looking at since evening, the respiratory system. All right? So um, we have to remember that. All right. So five. Which of the following food is a good source of vitamin A? Milk? Orange? Kidney? Fish? Liver? Oil? And we're looking at the CSEC Human and Social Biology paper 2016. It's a regional paper, regional exam, Caribbean exam. And we're looking at the preparedness of our students for the exam. So persons are saying, uh-huh. Persons are saying milk. Persons are saying fish liver oil. Uh, persons are saying no. Persons are saying kidney. Um, do I need to repeat the question? Do I need to repeat the question? All right, give me 10 minutes. All right. Uh, orange would be more vitamin C. Orange would be... <laughs> Tanisha, Tanisha, I think persons are mixing up orange with orange color food. Yeah, persons are mixing up that. I, I realized, I realized. Um, yes, I know I made a mistake. No, that's fine. Um, please don't validate yourself. If you went wrong, you went wrong. That's fine. If you all knew it, you wouldn't need to be here. So being wrong is very important, all right? So don't feel slighted or anything if you didn't get it right. That's fine. Just brush up and go again. That's what we do here. Tanisha, I heard about the fish one before. <laughs> Amoy Lawrence repeats and Mackenzie is saying that five is milk. All right. So we need to go over this again. Which of the following food is a good source of vitamin A? A, milk. B, orange. C, kidney. D, fish liver oil. I'm very happy that this question is bowling those persons who are doing biology. By this, you would have observed that all five questions that I have asked are questions that are covered under both biology and HSB. So the answers are coming in again. Second round of answer. Kevon, please revise your answer. Uh, Thorpe is saying D. Uh, Thorpe is convinced that it is D. Miller, anyone? Miller, I agree with Mackenzie. Uh, please do not type I agree with anybody. Please write your answer. All right? Please. We don't want anybody to hide behind anybody. All right? Um, Tanisha, I will stick with, I will stick with the fish. <laughs> uh, Shaquilla is saying kidney. Your answer is going to be D, fish liver oil, or what we refer to as cod liver oil. All right? All right, so for vitamin A, and remember I did that with you guys, it's going to be fish liver oil. Please do not confuse yourself with orange and orange color food. I know your textbook say orange color food. And they always put the orange there because persons always say orange. Oh, some orange have orange color. All right, we're talking about pumpkin and egg and that type of a thing. All right, six. Which of the following cell structure trap energy 
from sunlight to helping the production of simple sugar. You realize when I told you guys that you could practice either of the multiple choice paper I have up. This is a HSB question, and all these are things covered on the biology syllabus. Hmm? What? Huh? Uh, usually it's inclement weather condition. Uh, food with vitamin A, liver, cod liver oil, yellow, and orange vegetables, and fruit like carrot, but remember the carrot is the orange color, carotene, and pumpkin, yes, orange color, uh, leafy vegetable. All right, so there you have it. There you have it. All right, so Tanisha is out of the block very, very fast. She's saying for question number six, it's going to be the chloroplast. Amoy Lawrence is saying the chloroplast. Anybody else? Um, guys, as we talk about the chloroplast, remember that your paper is always asking you about the chloroplast and the mitochondria. In the last class we had, I'd ask you to look at the picture diagram. I'd ask you to ensure that you know them different when you see a picture. Um, worms, worms is here again. No. All right. Um, let me repeat the question. Question number six: Which of the following cell structure traps energy from sunlight to help in the production of simple sugar? A. Nucleus. B. Cell wall. C. Chloroplast. D. Mitochondrion. Might I say I have a video on my channel? for all of these questions so far. So you probably need to visit my channel. And of course, I have other past papers on the channel that you can visit. This is, this is not on the channel as yet. The answer for six is going to be chloroplast. Person shine away now. Don't shy away. It just show your readiness and show how much more work you have to put in. All right? It's not time for you to turn back, but time for you to press on. All right? Miller, am I... I thought leafy vegetables were vitamin K. All right, one other thing with vitamins, I like to tell students, just go to the book and read the book because um, it doesn't really afford us uh, or allow us. It doesn't really require us, really, to even think about what it is. Just check the table in your textbook, whichever textbook. I like to tell students, when you come to class, carry a pen, paper, book, everything like you're in a regular class at school. All right? So... Amoy was very was correct though. What Amoy had um, posted there was correct. This one we're going to be looking at, and we have a lab up for it. Like I told you that both HSB and biology should be doing labs. Do I know they don't allow the HSB students to do lab? I don't know why. Question number seven. It is a lab. Listen. Which of the following reagent gives a positive test for the main food present in a slice of baked potato? This question repeat on almost all the papers that I have done. What it means is that you guys are not getting it correct. What is your answer? Which of the following reagent gives a positive test for the main food present in a slice of baked potato? A. Burette. B. Ethanol. C. Iodine solution. And D, Benedict solution. Tanisha, out of the block, iodine. Kevon, out of the block, iodine. Miller, out of the block, iodine. 70 C, anybody else? Three, three more minutes to go. Iodine. Amoy Lawrence, iodine. Yes, because the baked potato would be testing for starch. And the positive test there for starch, remember, it's always going to be blue-black. So it's iodine that we're looking at. Question number eight. Let us look at question number eight quickly. Which of the following are properties of enzymes? Enzymes. I have a part of enzyme out. I still have some more work to do. All right. Enzyme one. They mostly work on one, and this you are going to be selecting from a number of stuff, 
So you have to listen to me. I'm going to be reading three options, and then I'm going to be giving you the ABC. So let's just go. Which of the following are properties of enzymes? One, they mostly work on only one substrate. Two, they work best at a particular pH. Three, they are not affected by temperature. And this is a question that comes on a lot of paper, which means that you guys are not answering it properly. So let us go. Is your answer A? That is A represents one and two. B, one and three. C, two and three. D, one, two, three. V1 excluding temperature. Now, remember that you can choose more than two. In. I know that this one will give you a little trouble. The problem here, we have three things. I gave you three um, suggested characteristics of enzymes. And then you are supposed to know. So the first characteristic I gave you, our suggested characteristic, is that they work on only one substrate. The second suggested characteristic, they work best at a particular pH. The third they are not affected by temperature. No, the answers, A, should you, are you selecting one and two? Are you selecting one and three? Are you selecting two and three? Or are you selecting one, two, three? What is the answer? Let me see what happens here. A lot of persons are answering. So Kevon is saying one and two, which is A. Tanisha is saying A. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Uh, that's going to take us to the end of this evening. I have some other questions I'm going to be sharing with you. As we move closer to the exams, I will be working on some papers. It might be a paper two question. I, I got some paper that person sent to me from all over the place, asking me to assist with answering the papers. I'm going to be doing my best at answering them. And you are going to be doing your best at watching them to the end. So I am back over here with my friends. All right. Thank you very much. So that is going to bring us to the end of the show for this evening. I'm very happy that I showed despite of what is happening in my head. Uh, because if I did not show, I would not get to, of course, enzyme do require a particular temperature. Yes. And if they don't have that temperature or if the temperature is too high, it's going to cause them to be denatured. Sir, May, sir, May, June 2016, paper two, November no, um, number 2B, could you go through it? I'll see if I have the paper. If I, You sent the paper to me, am I? Am I? Tell me if you send the paper to me. If you send the paper to me, I'll check it and see um, what's that mean there. All right. So I was saying that I'm very ha happy that I turned up for this session. Uh, you never know where the session will go. I was a little under the weather. I'm still a little under the weather, but I am not going to give up the opportunity to be with you once I can be with you. It's in what I sent you. All right, cool. cool. So I'm going to be looking at it. All right, so keep practicing. I realize that there are some persons who are stronger than some, and I realize that there are some persons who are not so strong. But you know what I like about this? Even the persons who are not so strong they got an opportunity to see that they are yeah that's a yengas right um it's like we're going to have an, an anthem for this class yengas yengas because once we're having class you know a yengas is going to pass all right so some persons realize that they really need to do some more work and there are some persons who are out of the pack and they are going very, very well. I like the whole idea that there are some persons who can give reasons uh, for the answer. And there are some persons who are still guessing around. I am going to re um, recommend again uh, 
I don't know. Some persons are probably new this evening. We have a lot of videos on the channel. You can go to the channel and you can look at what we have there. We have a lot of past papers now. You can go there and look at the past paper. And of course, I want you to be inviting somebody every time you come into class. Don't walk alone. Right? We need to build this number. We need to build this number. Um, thanks very much to those persons who have joined from all across the Caribbean. I think today we had uh, Guyana. We had um, St. Vincent. We had Trinidad. We had Grenada. Grenada and what? If you think they used two words for Grenada, two countries or two islands. Uh, forgive me, my, my social studies like really rusty and I don't have any geography. All right. So we have a whole lot of island here this evening. And of course, the Jamaicans, they are always here. Um, my, oh, Tanisha, Antigua and, and Barbuda. That's what, that's what? Yes. So I'm seeing the Antiguans for the first time. Um, big up yourself. I hope you know Jamaican. Uh, we talk, um, it's not always English, you know. On the street, English is really spoken by pretty, a pretty few. All right. Most persons just use what we call in Jamaica, patwa. Right. So we talk a whole lot of patwa. But like I like to say, if you don't understand what I've said, you just say it in the chat there. Like the one Tanisha draw some Guyanese for me with the year. After me ask what will happen. I ask what would have happened if you continue to run during a exercise and you were experiencing fatigue as a result of lactic acid. Here Tanisha draw Guyanese for me. Badam, badam. Something like that. And I am like, what's badam, badam? You know? Tanisha, badam, badam mean you're going to fall down. Is that what it means, Tanisha? I don't see Otisha, and I have not seen Otisha's sister. Where are they? So, so how would I do it now, Otisha? Someday Otisha them come, and someday some not come. That's what my Guyanese are doing. There's there somebody who would, uh, would ask, um, they, they said that they, they are not able to see the live. Jawawan is not here from Trinidad either. Um, St. Vincent is here. Matt Millan is here from St. Vincent. Now, you can't see the show right after the show, right? After the show, there are other persons who are... Oh, Creole, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah, we call it... Well, in Jamaica, we don't really talk about Creole. We just say Patwa, you know? But, of course, it's Creole, all right? It's the local tongues. We call it Creole, the local tongue, Patwa, that type of thing. Um... I'm missing out on something. What I was about to say just now. Okay. Um, pretty much. Thank you very much for being here. I don't remember what I was going to say now. I think I'm probably dehydrated. Thank you very much for coming. Please share, like, subscribe. If you are watching from distant land, you would have realized that this is a family. We know everybody's name. Uh, they know our name. We continue to have new persons joining. And like I said, we are going to be touching the road with some more marketing. So we're going to be seeing more persons on the channel. We really appreciate what is happening. We are looking good on the back end. The statistic is showing us really, really good. We continue to try to put up at least four past paper per week. This week we did nicely. And um, next week, buyer students, you must be saying we have no new past paper. Yes, we're going to be working on some for the buyer students. So you should be seeing some bio paper coming out next week. HSB, they're asking for some paper too. We're going to see what we can do. But remember, as of now, we're going to be moving in line with both syllabus and we're going to be moving volume. So when I'm preparing, I'm using like both syllabus and I'm going to be going like wide. It's good that you know both syllabus. Trust me. It's good that you know both syllabus. So again, thanks much for coming. You are going to hear me on the road with this loudspeaker. And my little blue car, um, marketing C set biology, the cover page. The advertisement is out. Wonder if you want to hear my advertisement. Let me let me just allow you to hear it before you go. You must want to hear Mr. Wilson. I tell you, this guy is so multifaceted. I'm getting some water here. Thank you very much. There's always somebody in the background that keep me going. So Anna is over there and he's looking at me. I'm trying to get this thing up so that you can hear the new ads. 
and you can say, oh, Mr. Wilson, what kind of fool fool adds that or something to that effect? Or that, that is great. Um, that, but I'm going to be waiting for the feedback. The system is very slow, but you're going to be hearing the ad. We have two ads coming out. I'm going to be putting the ads on the channel as well. But I'm going to be doing something for those students uh, from other islands. I'm going to be giving you some shots of the places that I would have visited. So I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear it? CSEC Biology, the cover page, is your free online biology and human and social biology class on YouTube. Subscribe to realize your dream in biology or HSB and study with students from across the Caribbean. Your time is now as we move to reach 50,000 Caribbean students with animations, labs, notes, videos, demonstration, live classes, and past papers. Subscribe now to CSEC Biology, the cover page, and remember to share the secret. Remember, it is free on YouTube. See you there. Teachers, adult learners, parents, students, youth group, churches, this is just for you. Set Biology on the cover page, your free biology and human and social biology classes on YouTube. Subscribe and share now so you can enjoy labs, animations, notes, live classes, videos, demonstration, and past papers. All free, just for you. And meet our many other Caribbean learners as we move to help 50,000 students with free online classes. Subscribe to CSET Biology, the cover page, and share the link with others. We are on YouTube. Oh, wow. It's free. Yes, it's free. Free, free. Subscribe to CSET Biology, the cover page. All right, so biology with that, we take the evening online online down. Biology Thank you very much for joining. Biology See class you on, on Sunday. Subscribe to realize your dream Tata. in biology or HSD. You want to say hi? with and students I? from across the Caribbean. All right, come your on. Your time is now as we move to the nice Caribbean today. students with animations, labs, notes, right. videos, demonstration, live classes, right. and fast paces. Ah. Subscribe now to CSET Biology Say hi. Page and I'm remember a good boy today. to share the secret. Smile. Remember, Smile. it is free Smile. on YouTube. Yes. See you there. Smile. Smile. Show them make up. Show them. Smile. Teachers, adult learners, parents, students, youth group, churches, this is just for you. CSET no. Biology the cover page. Not your again. free biology and human and social biology classes on YouTube. Subscribe right. and tell share now. That's so it you for can enjoy guys. labs, can go. animations, notes, live classes, videos, bye -bye. demonstration, and past papers. All free just for you. And meet our many other Caribbean learners uh -huh. as we move to help 50,000 students with free online classes. Subscribe to CSET Biology on the cover page and share the link with others. We are on huh? YouTube. Oh, wow. It's free. Yes, it's free. Free, free. Subscribe to CSET Biology. What, what do you want to hear, page. Worms? CSET Biology, the cover the page. Ads, you're not hearing the online ads? biology and human and social biology class on YouTube. Subscribe you to hearing? realize your dream in biology or HSC and study with students from across the Caribbean. Your time is now as we move to reach 50,000 Caribbean students with you're animations, right labs, notes, videos, demonstration, live classes, and past papers. Subscribe now to CSET Biology, the cover page, and remember to share the secret. Remember, yes, it is free on YouTube. See you there. Teachers, adult learners, parents, students, youth group, churches, yeah, this is just for you. CSET Biology, the cover page, your free biology and human and social biology classes on YouTube. Subscribe and share now so you can enjoy labs, animations, notes, live classes, videos, demonstration, and past papers, all free just for you. And meet our many other Caribbean learners as we move to help 50,000 students with free online classes. Subscribe to CSET Biology, the cover page, and share the link with others. We are on YouTube. Oh, wow. It's free. Yes, it's free. Free, free. Subscribe to CSET Biology, the cover page. CSET Biology, the cover page, is your free online biology and social biology class on YouTube. 
subscribe to realize your dream in biology or HSB and study with students so from across the Caribbean. His your career. time is now as we move yeah. to reach 50,000 Caribbean yeah. students with animations, labs, notes, videos, demonstration, live classes, and past papers. Subscribe now to CSEC Biology, the cover page, and remember to share the secret. Remember, it is free on YouTube. See you there. Teachers, adult learners, parents, students, youth group, churches, this is just for you. CSEC Biology, the cover page, your free biology and human and social biology classes on YouTube. Subscribe and share now so you can enjoy labs, animations, notes, live classes, videos, demonstration, and past papers, all free just for you. And meet our many other Caribbean learners as we move to help 50,000 students with free online classes. Subscribe to CSEC Biology, the copper page, and share the link with others. We are on YouTube. Oh, wow.